Alrighty, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take what we did with step one, these repos that are out on GitHub. Now GitHub is a web interface um, that is used uh, to ho host our repos, but now what we're going to do is place them or recreate them in a sense locally so that we can work on our local systems and then push, and th these are things you'll see as we work through, your code into GitHub so that you can share it with me or share it with the class, right? So public are the ones we share with everybody in the class, everybody on GitHub, and then private is between you and me. All right, so all the work you have for this class requires these two uh, repos to be set up locally. Okay, now in here, uh, there's some steps. So first thing we need to do is have you do some install of some free applications. First one is VS Code. Now, if you don't want to use VS Code as your editor and you're somebody that's already been doing coding and you have an editor that you like, you know, and you're comfortable with it and you know how to use Git, yeah, I would definitely say, you know, I, I don't try to tell people absolutely what they need to use, but in general, if you're new to this, I would recommend using the software uh, I'm recommending. This VS Code is very popular, used a lot in coding by a lot of different people. I was reading the other day, it's one of the most popular, um, and we call it an editor. I mean, there's different terms we could use, like integrated development environments, but eh, you don't need to know too much of that right now. So we'll just go ahead and have you install it. When you click on this link I've given you uh, based on your win your environment. So I typically use a Mac, but for these videos I'm using Windows because I find typically most students are using Windows, but that's not always as true anymore. Uh, you can install VS Code on Windows, on Mac, on Linux. Uh, it's very versatile that way. Now there is also web versions, uh, but in this case, um, you know, if you want to be able to use a web only version, uh, you could come chat with me. I've used various ones uh, before, but for in general, I think the steps I'm about to show you are just good to have and good to know. And so VS Code is pretty much just install it, follow the prompts, and then when you're done, uh, you should see it. You can load it here. Um, you won't see it look exactly like mine, but in general you will. There's some nice stuff here, and we'll come back to this in a minute, but I'm going to go ahead and close it for now. So when you've completed that step, you will have VS Code. Now the second step requires just a little more conversation. In the second step, we're going to install a uh, Git. Now we've been using GitHub, right? This is GitHub. This is the website, but uh, it's fundamental. What we're using is Git version controlling so that we can version control our, our code. So you can just generally here, click on this. Uh, and for Windows folks, you can just download it and run the install. Now there's a couple of steps in there, but in general, you can just take uh, the defaults. Matter of fact, I think I could uh, just, even though I already have it, is just go ahead and download. Now, in this case, you'd want to know what version you have, whether you have the 32 or the 64. And if you're not sure of that, you can always just go into your Windows and set that, but I or figure that out. But typically, if you have a newer computer, I have the 64-bit version and it's coming down now. So this is probably good. I hadn't planned on showing this install, but I think it's good because, you know, it often will change a little bit. So let me just go ahead and run this. And I'll walk through this and I'll say, yep, yeah, do you want to load it? Yep, that's good. And now we'll get a some information. You know, I should say we should all read this exactly step by step or word by word, but I'd be lying if I said I did. There actually are software, uh, pieces of software that you can use to pull out the important parts of that. Definitely uh, something we should all be thinking about doing. So it's just going to do its typical install here. Uh, it's just going to run. I had an older version of Git, so this is probably good for me to have as well. And that allows me to show you. Now what will happen is you can have another app, but we're going to do something called integrate. We're going to integrate this into our VS code. So we end up using just one. So I'm not going to launch it for this purpose, but we'll just go ahead and hit finished. Right. We're going to do VS code right because we're going to select this is what we're going to open these files with and i'm going to say always good yeah for some reason it opened oh it just opened some release notes okay good okay so i'm going to go ahead for now and just shut this because i don't need them 
And then that should be all I get, so to speak. <laughs> and so now what you should see is on your system, if you were to go into your apps, like all apps, you will see, uh, if you scroll down to the Git, you should see a Git uh, folder. And then in here, you'll see Git Bash, Git Commands, Git GUI. In general, uh, we're going to be using Git Bash. Like if I was just to click on it here, you would see this interface. But I'm going to show you how to get this in VS Code. OK. All right, so in here, let's go ahead and go back to VS Code now, now that we have it installed. And it still wants me to do that, but I'm not sure why. Restricted mode, safe. Yeah, so what we're going to do, so now that we have it, uh, I'm going to walk you through the next part of our instruction, because in that we will actually set VS Code. So what I'll have you do, oh, for Mac users, and, and I, I am a Mac user myself, VS Code is a little more of a setup. Uh, depending on where your version and all that. But one thing I've done, because I had to install a Mac recently, especially if you're um, on the M1 or the M2 or, or older, you can just go to Terminal uh, on your Mac, find Terminal, and run this command. And you can just copy and paste this. And what this will do, and it's, a, not, a, it's, not, a, it's not a slim install, it actually takes a few minutes. You basically is part of uh, VS Code, or Xcode, which is a development environment for the Mac. You will get um, VS Code in there. So what you can do, either whether you're on Windows or you're on Mac, just to verify that you actually do have it running correctly, or you do have Git installed, you can go here to um, uh, VS Code, and what we'll do is go ahead and set up our, our folder, and in that process I'll show you how to see if you correctly have Git on your local system. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do File, I'm going to say Open Folder, and so in this case, I don't have, it's going to default to wherever I was last located. I'm going to go to Documents, and in Documents, I'm going to right-click. Now, depending on your operating system, there's different options here. I'm going to create a new folder, and it's going to be called CIT. Now, this is just my recommendation, 93 SP23. might be a different semester, so check that out. Uh, and because some, some of you be taking multiple classes from me, this helps us kind of consolidate just uh, the files for this class in here. And I'll hit enter. Cool. And now that I have that, now I could have done that also in File Manager. Not a big deal. And I'll go ahead and select Folder. Now when I do that, when I select that folder here, uh, generally it does ask me if I want to trust that environment. So if you get that uh, URL or that uh, interface here, just go ahead and select Trust. Now I'm in this folder. Okay, so now I'm going to just verify that I have Git installed. So I'm going to go New Terminal. And now for me, it defaults into Bash. So if you come, if you don't, if you see something different, that's okay. Um, but if you want to default to Bash and kind of have the same interface that I have, you can either just sit plus here, right? Notice I have Bash. And then if you want to set this as your default, because there is some PowerShell, which is totally fine, command prompt, which should work for the most part. But I find that using Git Bash just creates a better uh, a command line uh, environment for, for what I do and generally for students that are new to this. Okay, so if you want to go in and configure this to always have that, you can. it took me a little while earlier, I was scrolling to it, it took me a little while to find that default one. Uh, I had to just look, keep, oh, there it was. Okay, so the default, uh, I selected Git Bash. Again, PowerShell works as well uh, if you're familiar with that. Okay, so all I did there was I went plus. Uh, you can just select the, uh, Bash and then it will open it. But if you want it to always default to Bash, you just come over here doing new uh, terminal and having set that default, you should now see it here. Okay, so now that we have the terminal, now we can do what I wanted you to do before, which is to type git dash dash version. And what this will do is tell you if you have what version of Git that you have. And if you don't have it, that's where you need to stop and get some help and troubleshoot because the next stuff we're going to do depends on you having this installed. 
Okay. So in this video, and I think now that I'm looking at it, I think before we hit the clone, I'm going to just have this video stand on its own. What you want to have is created that folder, install, sorry, first installed VS code, installed Git, uh, set up the folder on your local system. You can do this wherever you want. I happen to put it in my documents. If you're running on Windows, it actually does show it. Um, I've noticed it's kind of funky. I don't really, and then I'm working on Windows 11, but it does actually show it in OneDrive, which is funky, but um, I can also see it on my local system. So again, it should say CIT93 SP23. Um, in this case, I do use uppercase. I think those are better practices to have. Uh, so I had you do that. I had you once you're in VS Code, do new terminal showed you how to set bash terminal notice i have two sessions i can always just hit uh, this to do uh, to kill a session if i want to kill a session and to come back and do a new session and the reason i'm doing this is so that you don't have a different program you could use just bash directly if you wanted like i showed you before is to go in and find git bash uh, if you wanted to just run it as a different program i just like running it all together uh, and so that's what you need to have set up and have this folder open uh, in VS Code and then we'll move on to the next step. Hope this helps.